But for the purpose of our conversation tonight, we are going to treat the part that concerns us most. We are going to treat the part that concerns us most. So we are talking about unfailing love of God. First of all, let us understand the terms we are saying. The main two terms here is unfailing. Mm-hmm. Another one is love. Now, I believe we all know about God, whom God is, and everything about God. Mm-hmm. But do we really know what it means to have something that is unfailing, which is opposite of failing? In other words, there is something that can never fail. Something Hallelujah. that can never fail. Hallelujah. Now, we are talking about love of God. Mm-hmm. What is unfailing love of God? So, unfailing love of God is God's character. Mm. Unfailing love of God is God's character. Mm. If they should wake me up today and said, what is or what are the characteristics of God? The first thing I will say is that God cannot fail. Mm. Yeah. God cannot fail. Hallelujah. So because of this character of God, that is why I have the courage to talk about this unfailing love that I want to talk about. Mm. Now, the unfailing love of God <laughs> I'm going to talk about. Sorry, there is a little noise background on my face. No problem, sir. I can, can hear you clearly. So the unfailing, the unfailing love of God I'm going to talk about, I just want us to read Isaiah 48 from verse 10 and verse 11. Isaiah chapter 48. We can even read it from verse 9 to verse 11 for us to understand the meaning of unfailing love of God. I read Isaiah 48 from verse 9. It says, For my name's sake, when I defer my my anger, and for my praise, will I refrain from thee? Verse 10, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the fullness of affliction. From verse 11, it says, For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted, and I will not give my glory unto another man. Hallelujah. We are talking about unfailing love of God. Now, I just want to talk about the reason why God cannot fail in whatever he do, especially when it comes to things that concerns men. Now, in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible says that we were created in the image of God and his likeness. In other words, we are the product of God. Pastor Abel, Every manufacturer value his product. Every manufacturer value his product. For example, now, if you go and buy Samsung mobile phone or any other thing, when you buy it newly, they will give you a guarantee. Then they will give you the manual, which is the instruction to follow. Then at the end of the manual, that guarantee comes with a lot of promises. They will tell you, Use this phone like this. When it's spoiled, don't repair it by yourself. Bring it back to us. We repair it in our own cost. Shift it back to you in our own expense. If the phone cannot be repaired, we give you a new one in our own expense. Hmm. Some, some companies don't know you. Sure. But there is something they are doing. They are protecting their reputation. The word is reputation. So, if Samsung company could protect ordinary phone because of that, that word, Samsung written at the back, this, because if the product fails, their reputation is in danger. What about God? And what about us? That we were made in the image of God. Hallelujah. Now, the verse and the chapter we read, God was telling the children of Israel, though you have sinned against me, Though you have disobeyed me, though you have done all kinds of things that you shouldn't have done, but I am not going to save you because you are righteous. I'm not going to save you because you are holy, but I'm going to save you for my name's sake. Hallelujah. That, that my name's sake, the word in the Hebrew, the meaning of the word in Hebrew is reputation. It's the same word as image. Is a reputation. So God is going to save you or bless you or protect you, not because you are so good, but because he wants to protect his reputation. Because you are answering Hallelujah. a man of God. You are answering a son of God. You are, you are going to church. People are identifying God with you. So anything that happens to you sends a bad reputation to God. 
we are talking about unfailing love of God. So God. Now, I want us to refer what we are saying to our daily life. Pastor Ebel, do you know why so many relationships, so many marriage have broken? It's because they did not understand what it means to have unfailing love. This is what I learned from God. I took time mm. to study why God's love is unfailing. Mm. And this is what I got from my study. I discovered that for God to love us unconditionally, God has a purpose why he created us. Hallelujah. And even though man has done so many things, imagine God coming down from heaven in the form of human being just to protect his purpose why he created man. Glory to God. And mm. It is the purpose that made God to love man. And that is why we have God's unfailing love. If you want to have unfailing love, we are your husband or we are your fiance if you are not married. The only thing you have to do is to lay the marriage or the relationship on a purpose. Because time will come, there will be storm, there will be problem, there will be challenge. Only thing that could keep you is purpose why you started the relationship or the purpose why you started the marriage. That is the only thing that could keep you. So I discovered that the only thing that made God to remember his people to send Jesus Christ to die for us, even he reaffirmed what I'm saying in John 3, 16, one of the most popular and verse of the Bible. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. In other words, what motivates God to send Jesus is his love. And that is unfailing love. And I don't want us to just talk about this unfailing love without referring to our daily life because the word of God will not be useful if it doesn't affect our daily life. Amen. Amen. So I want this word we are hearing to be useful to our daily life. In our working place, in our family, in our school, in our business, even in the church, if you want to build the relationship you have with people, if you want to make sure that the relationship you have with people will, will continue to grow, even where there is disappointment, where there will be failure, where there will be trials and temptation, you need to build the relationship on purpose. Now, Pastor Abel, to us, mm. we the image of God. Do we know the reason why God created us? Because if God could continue to save us because of the purpose he has for us, he continues to save us, he continues to bless us, he gives us everything we want, just because of the purpose why he created us. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Let us make man in our own image and let them take dominion on earth. So he has a purpose why he created us. So if God could be saving us because of the purpose why he created us, then we ourselves, we the product of God. Do we really know the reason why God created us? The average human beings on earth don't even know the purpose why they exist on earth. We are talking about the unfailing love of God. So many Christians today are wondering, why is it that people that don't even know God worship God, they are prospering. They are enjoying good things of God. Why we the believers, you go to church, it seems that things are not moving well with you, the unfailing love of God. And the Bible reaffirmed that, that God sends the Son, even to the righteous, even to the sinners. God knows everybody. Mm, that is the unfailing love of God. Glory so, to God. If we really want to sustain this unfailing love in our life, we need to ask ourselves, what is the reason why? Why God created us? What is the reason why? Because if God created us and told us the reason why he created us, as I read in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, we should know that one of the primary purposes why God created us, as he said, is to have dominion on earth. Hallelujah. Now, what is dominion? Dominion has to do with somebody controlling a territory, mm. imparting it with the wind of God and the original intent of mm. God. Mm. So, we need to understand and find out the reason why God sent us to earth. And for us to understand that, Pastor Abel, 
There are five questions I always want people to answer to know the reason why God created them. When I was in secondary school, they taught me that uh, I came from ape, I came from monkey, evolution of man, all those stories. And a lot of people have different stories, how they came to it. I don't know about you, but as far as I am concerned, I have a manual, how I was created by a manufacturer called God. And it is stipulated in the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I'm laying more emphasis on this Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, because it is a big picture. It makes you to understand why you exist. And one of the five questions I want us to answer tonight, number one is, who am I? I'm not talking about, maybe your name now is Pastor Abel. That is not what I'm talking about. Another person might be Sources. Another person might be Collins. No, that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, do you really know whom you are? Ah. Now, let me tell you what I mean. Jesus Christ came to earth, but Jesus Christ never said, I am Jesus, because that is his name. He said, for example, I am the light of the world. That is whom he is, not Jesus people call him. He identified himself by the purpose why he came. I am the light of the world. I am the way. I am the truth. You understand? So if I say, Pastor Abel, who are you? You shouldn't tell ah. me that your name is Pastor Abel. You should tell me that I came to liberate souls. I came to solve problems. I am the solution. I am the, you identify yourself by whom you are. That is the first question I want us to answer. Who are you? Mm. Pastor Abel, the second question I want us to answer is where are you from? Mm. Where am I from? I don't mean you are from Ghana, you are from America, you are from Nigeria, you are from Egypt, you are from Italy. I have no business with your ge geographical location. I don't mean where you come from geographically. I'm talking about your origin. Do you really know where you come from? If God lives in heaven and God made us, you should know that you came from heaven. And when you know that you came from heaven, that you came from God, that will change your perception on how you see things. That, you, that will change your reasoning on how you perceive things. Some people don't know the ability they have. Some people don't know whom they are. So if you really know whom you are, that will determine how you perceive circumstances around you. That is how you perceive your challenges because you know that greater is he that is in you. Why? Because you know whom you are. Pastor Eva, number three question I want us to answer is why are you here? Why are you on earth? The average human being on earth doesn't know the reason why they exist on earth. That is why we wake up early in the morning, we go to work, we never, we never night. We work more than our, even our power. They pay us lesser than we're supposed to earn. And we work like that all the days of our life without even discovering the purpose why God created us. Mm. It is a tragedy. Mm. We are talking about unfailing love of God. For you to behold and understand this unfailing love, you need to understand even yourself and understand the God that made you. Now, if you really know the reason why you are on earth, it has a lot of things to do with your destiny. It will shape the way you think. If you really know where you come from, that I came from God, there are so many things in life when you look around in life, what is going on today, we live in a world where we are not supposed even to be happy. But remember what Jesus Christ says. You are in the world, but you are not of the world. That determines where you came from. You are in the world, you are not of the world. Now, sorry, I digress a lot. I like people to understand my concept and every word I speak. So many Christians don't know the meaning of the word. W-O-R-L-O-D, word. It's not the earth we are living. Earth is not world. For example, in Italian, there is a difference between terra and mondo. Terra is earth. Mondo has to do with the system that rules the earth. That is the world. So when you see word in the Bible, word in the Bible means the system. For God son of the world that he gave his only begotten son. There, there is nothing wrong with the earth, but there is something wrong with the system of the earth because it is the devil that rules. 
That is why God wants to reintroduce his system. And remember that after God creating the earth, he said everything I created was good. good. That is the, the system God created, but it got spoiled. And that is the reason why Jesus Christ came to liberate us. Now, Hallelujah. going back to the fourth question is what can you do? What can you do? A lot of people don't really know what they can do. What can you do? It has to do with your ability. What can you do? Why number five is where are you going? Where are you going has to do with your destination. Now, these are the five questions. Let us return to our main topic that we are discussing, which is the unfailing love of God. Now, when we are looking in our life, there are so many things that are not, that are not going well with us. But by faith, we believe that it's going to be fine at the end. And that is where I want to talk to my fellow Christians. I love what God says in the book of Isaiah. He says, I am the only God. There is no one like me. I finish things before I begin. I want us to understand this very well. He said, I am the only God that finishes something before I begin. In other words, the reason why God cannot fail eh, is because before God does something, he has finished that thing before he started. Hallelujah. Wow. This, is, this is not a mystery, but it's a deep revelation that so many people don't know. Mm. If, for example, God asks you, Pastor Abel, relocate right now to Germany. When you, when you get there, go to the street, start preaching the gospel. Know that God has made everything. God has created your future. And God has positioned everything. God has have seen everything you are going to preach. Then now, God sending you, you, don't, you are not seeing what God saw. You are not seeing what God prepared. This is where our agony is tied to. So many of us are living life. We are crying, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? How are we going to live in this life? But God has finished everything about your life. That is why he cannot fail. That is where the unfailing love of God stands as a rock. Mm. And so many people would say that Jesus Christ died, came to earth 2,000 years ago, that Jesus Christ died 2,000 years ago. But my Bible tells me that this is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ coming to die for you, nobody could stop it because Jesus Christ has even died right from the foundation of the world. He has died for your sin. God has set everything. And that is why when you read Jeremiah chapter 1, even from verse 1, when God was sending Jeremiah, he said, before you were born, I knew you. I found ah. you in your mother's womb. I concentrated you in the womb to become a prophet. In other words, God has ordained you and finishes everything about you. Then God is now telling him, go and speak my word. Then Isaiah said, God, I'm very young. I don't know what I will say. God said, I will put my words in your mouth. Mm. Now, this is where we find ourselves. We think that maybe the debt we are owing, we can't pay it. Why God has paid it for us. We think that the problem we are facing, we, we, we won't be able, you know, to proffer solution to it. Without knowing that Jesus Christ himself has proffered solution to it. Hallelujah. So we are, if we want to understand the unfailing love of God, we don't have to be behind God. Because when you are behind and God has finishes everything about you, it, 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 it brings a lack of trust to where God is, meaning you don't trust God. For example, you have a daughter and you want to send your daughter to school. You go to the school, you ask the school, my daughter is going to school here in your university for good four years. What is the cost? They said one million euro. You bring that one million euro, you pay for the school fees of your daughter. You have finished everything. You say your daughter, go to school for six years even though you don't see me go i will guide you i will do everything for you but you have paid the school fees and your daughter will say father i need to pay school fees i need to do this this is the situation we find ourselves when god has done everything for us god has finishes everything for us but we still cry god i need this i need this we've got to change our confession to understand the unfailing love of god hallelujah We've got to change our confession 
to understand the unfending love of God. Hallelujah. So many of us, you know, worrying is a lack of trust in God. I know that worrying is human. We are human beings. A lot of times we might get worried because of things happening. But why we are facing a lot of challenges, that is when we know, at least, if you love God, if you really trust God, if you really trust God's ability, if you really know that God's love never fails, that is the time to do that. Mm. So that is what it means to be unfending love of God. Thank you, Pastor Abel. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Tisha. Thank you so much. Uh, thank, you. Master, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for blessing us. Thank you. Thank you I so really much for having me. Your teachings. I love the way you analyze how you took us to, to the dimensions, the, the deep dimensions, and unveil what it means. What it yeah, means just that to, it, it is a little bit difficult for some persons to understand. Yeah, yeah, they will understand by the Spirit of God. They will get the understanding. I pray Amen. for everyone, spirit of, and as many that will come to wash by the same Spirit of God that is available here. That same spirit teach this man all things. I pray, may that spirit of God teach you and give you understanding of this word Amen. of his love in the name of Jesus. That Amen. even from today, we all, you begin to walk in this dimension of God's love in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, one thing, uh, one thing that is somewhat lacking in this period nowadays in, in churches in Christian is that people have not fully understood the unfailing love of God. Yeah. People have not understood how to work on this dimension of love. But I want us to, before we go, I want us to look at a, a verse together, uh, Psalm 107, Psalm 107, Psalm 107. Thank you, Lord. We'll just we'll just jump somewhere or seven. I'll focus on this and I'll be job. Thank you, Father. From what verse of Psalm one seven. From one or seven verse four. From verse four. Verse four. Okay. He said, "They wandered in the wilderness, in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in." Five, hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. The six, they cried, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. Now, if we go back to this same chapter, verse 1, Psalm 107, verse 1, it said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth. Forever. forever, for his mercies endureth forever. Verse mm -hmm. two: It says, "Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He had redeemed from the hand of the enemy, whom He had redeemed from the hand of the enemy." Now, if you look at this this chapter one o seven, Psalm one o seven. God, yeah. as you have told us, God has redeemed us from the beginning. God has redeemed man from the beginning. God has paid the price full. God has given everyone the unfailing love. God has shown everyone this unfailing love from the beginning. But yeah, I want to I want to ask you a question, Pastor Abel. Sorry to cut you short. What do you think that is the reason why people did not take cognizance of this unfailing love of God? Today, even Christians do ask. So many of them doubt. Do you think that God really loves us? Why do we see all these uncertainties, all these things happening in the world today, accident, robbery, corruption, people dying anyhow? What is the cause of everything? Does it mean that God doesn't love us? And we get told that Jesus Christ came to die for us, which we believe. And mm -hmm. so many people are still asking, if God has unfailing love and he sent Jesus Christ as a fan in John 3, 16, and Jesus Christ came to die for us, why are we still seeing evil in our world today after Jesus Christ has died? What do you have to respond to such people? Praise God. Amen. So I will use this verse, this chapter, 
107 to answer to throw light on that question. Okay. Now, okay. look at verse, verse 11. Some 107, 107 verse 11. It said, because they rebelled against the mm -hmm. words of God okay. and, con and contempt the counsel of the Most High, Therefore, he brought down their hearts with labor. They fell down, okay. and there was none to help. Then they mm -hmm. cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them mm -hmm. out of distress. Okay. Now, when people, when viewers began to face hard times, he said God allowed the sun, the rain, to come upon the good, upon the bad, upon everyone. Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. all of these things, all of these troubles, all of this, they, they are things that, that are normal. It comes. It comes. Yeah. But that does not mean, that is not saying that God has not made a way of escape. Just like mm -hmm. when God mm -hmm. sent Moses to go and bring the, the children of Israel out of, of Egypt, God knows that they would, when, on their way coming, there will be obstacles on their way. Exactly. He has made the way of escape for them. Mm. So even when yeah. Moses, when Moses got there, it was about praying. It was about crying. It was and God said, "What is in your hands?" He said, "Stretch it forth." He has mm. done this. He has shown this love. He has made his way of escape. He has saved wow. man from troubles. He has saved men from pains. He has saved us from difficulties. But we right. are. Actual, we are not going to, uh, to, to actualize, to accept this. That's the math. Wow, awesome. From what you just said, I think I have two things there. Number one thing I understood is that our weakness and what we are seeing on earth today is not a reflection that God is weak at all. At all. It's not a reflection that God does not love us. As many people that are passing through heartbreak, Many people that are going through, you know, a lot of things that are happening, sickness, evil accidents, threats to life, emotional affliction, it's not because God does not love you. And it's not because God is weak. So that is what I figured out from what you just said. And it is awesome. Secondly, it is very important for us to seek God. It is very important for us to understand the way and the process of God. Because a lot of time, when things, you know, when we are facing a lot of situation, we ask a lot of questions that are not supposed to ask at all. We started losing our faith easily. Mm. But there is a particular word that stands with unfailing love of God. That is, he that endured to the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. So mm. it's a cause of endurance. It's a process. Mm. Anything you are going through today, anything you are passing through today is a process. Mm. Just look at your baby that you gave birth, how she began to cry, how she grew up, how she crawled, she walked, she started running. Everything in life is a process. Mm. Believe me, what you went through yesterday, you are not going through it today. No. Look at your 10 years ago. Look at your 8 years ago. Look at your 5 years ago. Even some things you went through yesterday, Mm. They are gone on mm. the love of God. Hallelujah. Whatever God says, He must do. Whatever Hallelujah. God says, is must surely come to pass. Mm. I love this on the love of God. Mm. It gives me courage. Mm. It gives me hope. Mm. It gives me the way to, to believe and ascertain what I'm seeing in my future. Mm. On the love of God. When you have that mindset that God cannot fail, when you have that mindset that God cannot fail you. That you are not going to be barren, you are not going to remain without a wife, you are not going to remain without a husband, you are not going to remain jobless. Why? Because you have that mindset on failing love of God. Oh, we need to we need to allow this word to take supremacy of our minds. Mm. Before you cry, remember that God has never failed anyone. So mm. why should your case be different? Mm. Before you shed tears at night. Where nobody is there crying, God, why is my case different? Remember that God has not failed anybody. So why should your case be different? Mm. Unfailing love of God. My love for this, for this word, for this sentence, unfailing love of God. I will call it phrase, unfailing love of God. My love for it has not end because 
that is whom God is. Hallelujah. And that is the only thing that could save us in this. Even this present situation, we are battling with COVID-19. It seems that there is no solution on earth anymore to combat some problems. That is to tell you that human knowledge is limited. Mm. And that is a quest for us to understand the unfailing love of God. Love God. But I have a problem with the system of the world. The problem is, even though we produce medicines every day, good, it cannot solve the problem of sickness. Even though we change governments, it cannot bring a good government. Even though we tie the whole road, it cannot stop accidents. Even though we do all kinds of things that we want to do, it will not stop bad things. Why? The world has not trusted in unfailing love of God. The world has not believed that God is the only one. That Jesus, Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the light of the world. Mm. See, the, the Greek word for light means knowledge. And the Greek word for darkness means ignorance. So when Jesus Christ is saying, I am the light of the world, he's saying, I am the source of knowledge. Hallelujah. Yeah. God gave us knowledge. But remember that humans are not compatible with God except Jesus, mm. except through Jesus. Yes. So the knowledge we are using without Jesus is limited. It of cannot course. solve all our problems. And that is why the Bible says, we should seek for the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God is like a new world we come, God we rule, Go everything, the whole system will be in place. As I said, there will be no death anymore. So Hallelujah. God will wipe away our tears. Hallelujah. So this is what we get when we understand and behold the unfailing love of God. Thank when, you, Pastor Abel. When, when God's kingdom comes into our hearts, real, when it becomes real to us in our hearts, when God's kingdom becomes real to us in our mind. It's a being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when God's kingdom become become real, become real, what we are saying in the fifth time, we are not allowing those things to determine or to change. But when we see those things, we see those things as things that are not real. We see mm. those things as things that are mirage, that they are not mm. real. We start to see things the way God wants us to see it. We start to mm. see things from God's perspective that even yeah. though we may be troubled, even though we may be troubled in every side, but we know that God has made a way of escape. Even though we may run and fall, we know that God has made a way of escape. Look at what mm. uh, Psalm 82 told us. He said, They know not, Psalm 82, verse 5. He said, They know not, neither do they understand. The 